Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming to today's cello masterclass. Today, our special guest and teacher is Mr. Skorachevsky, who is the principal cellist in the Baltimore Symphony. So if you could give us a short intro, that'd be great. Uh, just a few words about myself, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi everybody, I, I, it would be great to see you all, but I, I, I suppose uh, maybe later. Um, yes, I've uh, been uh, in the Baltimore Symphony since before you both, uh, you all were born probably, uh, since uh, 2000 and um, approximately. I went to Peabody in Baltimore. I'm not sure where you guys are located, but that's where I went to school. And um, first, um, after school, I got a job in uh, uh, Montgomery, Alabama for a couple of years, then Kennedy Center, and then Baltimore Symphony. Uh, I kind of climbed the ladder of, of um, jobs there, starting with the season sub, then the regular member, then the third chair, and eventually to a principal. It took me a few auditions, um, approximately, um, let me think, actually, I, I counted my, all my orchestra auditions, so several in Baltimore, but a total of about 60 auditions overall. Uh, so get ready for that journey if you guys want a you know, um, symphony job. It's, it takes uh, many, many tries and uh, failures, unfortunately, uh, to, to get it right. But um, um, it's a long journey. But anyway, you guys um, are ready to perform for me. and. Uh, We'll work on those pieces and I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. And so, before we start, could everyone uh, like turn on your camera so I can take the Zoom screenshot? Yeah, I'll give everyone a few seconds. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, awesome. So our first performer is George Wolf McGuire and he'll be playing the Rachmaninoff Cello Sonata in G minor, the first movement. So. Whenever you're ready. Sounds good. I'm going to mute myself.
such a beautiful playing. I love your sound and the vibrato and the tone is just gorgeous. Very, very mature for, I assume you're a young man. So <laughs> it's, a, it's wonderful, very beautiful. Um, I have a couple of comments, uh, just, uh, just a general one about the vibrato. It's, it's very, very, it's, it's lovely. And I wish I had this kind of uh, uh, meaty vibrato myself. However, sometimes I feel like you overdo it by doing two fingers on the first finger. Sometimes that's what I'm seeing and hearing sometimes that this, that you're doing that. And I don't think you need to at all because you have such a wonderful sound as it is on other fingers. So I assume the first finger is about the same. So you're actually adding, you're like you're splashing too much color on the canvas. It's like, you don't need that much um, um, distortion in sound actually, because it just creates a little bit of a, of a too much oscillation in, in sound and it, it becomes uh, over exaggerated. So I will just examine wherever you are playing with the first finger and you have a longer note try not to add the second finger because it becomes almost like a trill you know so that's one thing the other thing is um uh, i feel like sometimes uh you could be more careful about uh extra stuff that's going on in your playing besides you're, you're producing beautiful sound but then between notes some stuff happens like accidental pizzicatos or you're playing on the your bow is still on the string uh, let's just see, uh, maybe like, like you, you would do, that's exaggeration, but sometimes there's just too much extra noise that's, ha that's happening that you can completely avoid by being a little bit more careful. Um, and along the lines of the vibrato, I, I would try to, um, make it more uniform so you actually vibrate every single note because i know you can i can see you have a nice nice technique and uh, uh, you know sometimes uh, what happens is that you vibrate the notes that are a little bit easier to vibrate and you don't the ones that are maybe just a tiny bit harder and it, that it creates like beautiful sound and non-beautiful sound just like some just single notes that you don't like and some notes that you really love <laughs> You know, so like the notes that you don't like, they're like, I would be jealous if other notes were, you know, more beautiful than me. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if it makes sense, but um, so for example, that note, that, that note needs, sorry. are very important too so I, I would try especially I mean in the music like that that's so romantic uh, that I would try to vibrate notes equally beautifully of course it's not always possible you know but but uh, most of the time I would and then um, that spot uh, towards the um, right before the moderato uh, that, uh, that it's marked diminuendo and poco ritardando. I would actually, when I play this, I, I leave that part to the pianist. So, because it kind of, you're, you're going a... Uh, it's kind of, it feels like a, such a deflation. <laughs> like you're deflating a balloon too soon. The pianist has enough time to prepare that melody uh, for himself or herself, so I would I would uh, suggest in your if, if you're playing with a pianist to actually go. The piano can continue that, and, and it is enough time. Otherwise, it's kind of uh, anti-climactic um, for you to do that. Then a uh, couple more things. I feel like that melody in moderato can be a little bit more pianissimo and uh, more maybe air in a sound. So, it, you know, and then he goes suddenly to 
not the fortis. So that difference can be a little bit bigger. You see that? And then I didn't actually understand what you were, maybe it was a little accident that on the top D natural, like that long note. I think maybe just that's too many bows that you did that. Maybe just, uh, oops, I lost my hint in here, sorry. Um, maybe just a little less. Uh, I would try to... You can totally do one bow, three, four, and then... Sometimes you can do... You can repeat the notes with like a little sound of that. Of that. Anyway, uh, why don't we start from the beginning? I, I talked for 10 minutes, but uh, let, let's uh, let's start from the beginning and maybe just uh, you know address some of these things that I uh, talked about. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. One, one more thing. One more thing. Do, do you uh, can you enable original sound on your computer? I think it's on, right? It is on? No. It is on? Yeah, yeah, I think it's on. Okay, then the internet's, you know. Okay, yeah. let's, let's, let's try again. So there's there's a rest. So just obey the rest. So I would I would just I would even be a little bit less hesitant with this amount of sound here, maybe. And quietly. Sorry for the intonation, but you know, just like very organized and not or overly romantic yet perhaps and maybe less less noises on the in between notes okay let's try one more time are you are you comfortable with this actually this playing there um like on the have, have you yeah have you tried You don't have to start at the very frog like it's pretty difficult to play pia piano at the you know here maybe you don't you have plenty of time just start maybe this much into the bow so and plenty of space to, to sustain that note you know it, you you have enough space you don't have to do starting at the very frog you know exactly where the f-sharp is you don't need to try it before i mean i can see that you know so you don't have to do this so um and, uh, and piano so there is a big difference okay let's go from the f-sharp right there Okay, and then long note, and you 
let the pianists do their thing. Okay, just start right there. <laughs> If you can avoid doing like a, you're doing a little bit of an extra accent there. Just a just a regular note, no accent. On the on the next beat, okay? Let's try it. Yeah, I, hear, I, I totally hear that a little of a just a little bit of a crescendo at the very note, at the end of your note. Yeah, you don't need to squeeze it out, just... The, the note, the bow just needs to move, change direction, nothing extra at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the bow. Try again. Like that. fit into the piano sound so and maybe not so much vibrato on that thing to just uh, you know disappear in the sound okay and let's go on for the for the allegro moderato okay so it's it says piano is percivo piano is percivo e tranquilo so it's it's not uh, all the emotions out yet so maybe just slightly undertone for, for the first time and then you know he, he has such a huge ups and downs almost bipolar kind of playing or tripolar or you know there are many many emotions and uh, you have plenty of time throughout you know 40 minutes of this piece to show all, all of it I don't think you need to just go wow in the very beginning you know <laughs> with, with with everything you've got you've got a lot of uh, potential and potential uh, emotional playing in your I mean your arsenal I mean you've got it all so you don't have to like everything at once at, in the beginning okay let's just try so maybe just a little bit laid back if you see if you ever watch Yo-Yo play this piece I mean he's, he's gonna just like lay back and, uh, and it's very just distance first you know so maybe there's something to learn from that okay let's try for it right there if you can avoid the pits right there you see that another thing uh, it's just a little bit noise somewhere between it's here just very very uh, gentle playing okay let's try one more time it's very beautiful Here. 
F sharp it's more important than because I hear I, I hear this beautiful sound on D but not F sharp so okay that's great let's go on con moto So that's the spot I was talking about, not maybe postpone the diminuendo or rallentando till, till later, and also sustain, uh, continue the same stroke in a bow, so it's not suddenly a longer note. So it's, so, and also like you want to look at the dynamics written here on those 16th notes, he writes piano or pianissimo, and then the next thing is usually like a mezzo forte, so you have um, the first one so there are these layers uh, when the piano is taking over uh, you, you go you drop down to piano when you want to come out he writes mezzo forte for you so it's uh, very clear what to do now uh, there's a, a little bit of an issue with the rhythm here i feel like you were uh, kind of compressing the rhythm a little bit too much on those uh, dotted uh, quarter notes so when you have so that it has to be absolutely steady so otherwise the pianist is going to kill you because there are so many notes that they cannot skip the beats and move forward so much so i would even though it says conmato there is a limit of how fast the piano can play it uh, so and that that spot usually is the, like a broadening of of um of the texture there too okay how much time do we have left amy about two minutes two minutes perfect Oh, perfect. Let's go on to the moderato spot. Uh, that's the, the next phrase, and we can uh, work a little bit on that for two minutes. <laughs> So it's great. So can you try one more time? The sound is kind of uh, not the best, uh, but uh, if if I can, I can see what you're doing at least. Uh, can you try the the beginning uh, four measures really pianissimo and and also pianissimo in your left hand too, meaning not you're doing fortissimo left hand and kind of mezzo forte in the right hand. So both hands pianissimo. And then I think you're playing that F sharp way too long after this. Okay, let's just do that phrase and we'll be done. Okay, so, okay, go ahead. That's very, very beautiful. I would just do a little bit more ritardando towards the end of it. Uh, and maybe a stretch a little bit when you have this uh, crescendo to mezzo forte, just take more time. Um, I encourage you to listen to many different recordings of this piece, so uh, it's uh, um, get inspired by, uh, I, I like uh, listening to Yo-Yo Ma and uh, Lynn Harrell um, and 
I'm sure there are many, many others that you can uh, learn from and, and study the piano score too, because that's, you know, if you don't know what the piano is doing, it's, it's kind of hard. I'm sure you're doing this, but, but uh, it, it helps a lot to, to know what the piano is doing. And, and not just this piece, but every piece that you play. Okay, bravo, that sounds beautiful, wonderful. Thank you. Beautiful sound. Awesome bravo. job, sounds great. Okay, our next performer is Jordan Zhao, who'll be playing the Brahms Cello Sonata number one, first movement. Okay, hello. Okay. Right there. 
Uh, may I ask how old are you? Uh, 14. 14. Wonderful. That's 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 a great piece to play at this at this young age. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I maybe we can kind of um, pick a couple of spots that I feel like maybe you can uh, can you can benefit from. I feel like sometimes the rhythm can be a little bit cleaned up. Um, let's see. Do you have big big numbers in your score, like number three? Do you see where three is? Oh, I don't. You don't. Okay. Um, let's see. Maybe I have a different edition somewhere. Uh, do I have? Hold on one second. This, this edition doesn't have anything. Anyway, uh, somewhere like in the middle of the first uh, page, you have. Do you see where that is? And then. That stuff, that spot, starting on F sharp. play that a uh, couple of measures because I feel like uh, if you were uh, to plug in a metronome to your playing the metronome would have to kind of wait for you a little bit so you have to know where the beats are and kind of bounce off the beat uh, right away because uh, I feel like you're kind of waiting it's just a little bit too long so there is a there is a limit how much you know the metronome needs to needs to um, the metronome doesn't wait for people you know so it's uh, can you just play that phrase please <laughs> just a little bit not steady if you are just to in your head kind of have this pulse going one two three ba -ba -da, ba -da -di -di, ba -da -di -di, ba -da -da -di. so the eighth notes cannot be too fast either okay let's try one more time <laughs> metronome on, on you somewhere nearby no so uh, like on the phone or something you can you can have a metronome I, I would suggest really uh, practicing this piece or just uh, probably any piece uh, uh, benefits from practicing especially when there are rhythms like this which are kind of a little bit complicated you know and if you can find a metronome that, that speaks to you like says one two three four you know and sometimes there are those metronomes so you can find a setting in that that, that will like remind you where you are. It's not necessary, but but it's, I like those things. But if you just plug in a metronome in here, you'll realize that sometimes you hold those notes a little bit too long and the eighth notes are a little bit too uh, too short. Uh, the, the other way to do it is just to play it very, very slowly and see that uh, how you react to that. So maybe at half speed, so. <laughs> me and just so you so you, that way you have eight notes kind of going in your head the whole time see like one two three one two three there are always three eighth notes in those long notes okay can you try one more time please right like this. <laughs> This uh, this uh, you know, in the next measure. So I have. That thing, that that 
turn that you see there, it's a, a squiggly thing. It's usually played very much in, in a, a specified tempo. So it's not um, kind of a free thing. It's, it sounds dum, da, 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 di, da, di. So there's like a triplet in there. Okay, can you just try that measure right there? Yeah, one more time. Yeah, it, it comes a little bit too soon, so it, it should come on the second eighth note. Dum ba da da di da so dum di di da di da di. Okay, try that. sometimes the same as before the rhythm is kind of uh, uh, you know not exactly uh, lining up with the bar lines okay try it right there from from there F sharp. <laughs> Let's do one more time from there, from F sharp, first F sharp, from there. Second one of those. Okay, second one of those. It's also too long, so it's a. measure is only a quarter note okay one more time from from there <laughs> not too fast but but fast enough so i feel like most pianists and cellists uh, th they feel this piece um not in four even though it's four four but uh it, that you, you can feel it more in two so it's it, it flows better otherwise it just takes too much time for everything to to be said so So just 
just uh, flows that much much better when you feel uh, that the pulse in two instead of four and just a little bit quicker. Okay, let's try one more time. <laughs> try figure out to figure out how to avoid those um, there are a couple of uh, position shifts towards the end we just finished uh, where we just finished um, if you can f f figure out how to avoid them because they kind of give a little bit of a hiccup to your playing do you hear that I'm exaggerating what do you do but change positions so there is no sound when you change positions the sound that you make is this there's a little bit of a, like a hiccup when you change the position to the next one can we start from the top C not sure okay from the top C That's good, that's good, that's good, uh, it's along the, those lines. Um, next thing I want to talk to you about maybe is the, the, the quality of sound. Um, I, I know that over, over Zoom, it's not the best that you can uh, you know, hear on both ends. When I'm playing, it's not the same as you know, if you were in the same room with me. So, having said that i can still tell that you can produce a better sound okay <laughs> do you know what i mean so even the beginning uh it says espressivo legato and i feel like that uh, both words are kind of missing a little bit in your playing because i hear um not so much espressivo and not so much legato in your playing here and that also goes on uh, in the second phrase on an a string where he adds uh, dolce, and dolce means sweet. So you can imagine, uh, maybe you can, you can maybe imagine what kind of sound that might be if you were to play sweetly. So when, when you want to do this kind of sound, maybe the vibrato has to be a little bit more special, and the bow uh, can, you can do something with uh, your bow stroke that uh, produces that kind of sound. So. I would, uh, I'm going to exaggerate to, I, I like to imitate students when I teach. So you see what you do and I, I exaggerate what you do and then you see, oh my God, that's not what I want to do. Okay. So, so here is you playing. Okay. From beginning. lovely it's nice and it sounds good and maybe there's nothing wrong with it but I know that I think if you uh, are spending time on the cello you can actually do a lot better and and uh, you can have a little bit more emotional emotion kind of uh, coming through your playing and uh, and beauty of sound you can produce a little bit be more beautiful sound and 
maybe kind of work also on your vibrato so it's maybe more tender and less um, uh, just uh, I feel like it's just a little bit too uh, um, standard you know it's just like it's it's a good vibrato but I think you can you can uh, have a little bit more special sound in your in your playing for especially like in the, that second phrase you see and the, the phrase also goes to the second measure so you can kind of uh, change the, the dynamic range of your playing see like in a in a second uh, phrase of that thing that he even writes a little bit crescendo here on the triplet you see So you can also uh, uh, show your emotion uh, in your playing by, by the different dynamics. So you can bring up the dynamic when the music gets more excited right there. So also in the very beginning, uh, piano can be a little bit less uh, as far as uh, loudness. That way you have more, more places to go when you actually rise the crescendo. Okay, so why don't we just play the very first four measures, okay? with all that said, okay? comment to, uh, to, to end it maybe uh, in those two sixteenth notes at the end would be nice actually most people tuck them in so it's no not separate but or yeah you don't need to you don't need to separate them even though they are written separate but most people um, play them legato all right so i think is that the time Bravo, yes. beautiful playing. <laughs> great job. Congratulations. Awesome job, great Jordan. Job. Sounds great. Awesome. We have a few minutes. Um, Mr. Skorchevsky, if you want to do like a short Q&A. Sure. sure. Okay, awesome. So if anyone has any questions about, I guess, anything music related or career related, you can unmute or you can put it in the chat. So um, I can go first. Uh, go ahead. I guess. What has been one of your favorite experiences performing with the Baltimore Symphony and why? Wow, uh, favorite. You know, uh, it's it changes all the time. And I, you know, I have definitely like f favorite concerts or favorite rehearsals or something in my mind, but it always updates itself, you know? So like, for example, yesterday, we had a recording session with uh, an incredible singer. Her name is Renee Fleming. She's world famous. And I just like, I missed that kind of level of playing and, and singing uh, and performing in the past, you know, 15 months or something. There was almost nothing. And then we came back, but we didn't have that type of uh, caliber, caliber of an artist with us, um, I think. Don't quote me, but because maybe there was somebody <laughs> great. But she came and and, uh, and it was just like breathtaking and incredible. So like for this year, yesterday was my favorite moment because she sang these uh, um, Handel arias and and uh, some other things. It's just such an incredible experience to to really relive, relive this. Uh, this level of, of playing, it was fantastic. And if you guys have, uh, is everybody in Maryland on, on this call? No. Um, yeah, it's, it's gonna be streamed on um, YouTube. And maybe I can just, maybe I can send you a link a little bit later because there's this big cello solo that I'm playing tonight. Li it's gonna be live, okay? So <laughs> I've actually never played like a big solo live on television or radio but so this is the first time so maybe you guys if you're interested you can you can find it but uh 
favorite for this year and definitely definitely uh, playing with Renee Fleming. Awesome. Does anyone else have questions? Okay. Um, I guess what are some responsibilities that come with being the principal player in an orchestral section? Okay, so responsibilities. Um, number one is um, show up on time. <laughs> and actually don't show up on time. You need to show up early because if you show up on time, you're totally late. <laughs> you know, when rehearsal starts at 10, you have to be there before. Uh, that's, you know, half serious. But of course, you, you need to be responsible uh, in that in that uh, aspect, but also you need to know the music. Obviously, um, it not only goes for a principal player, but uh, most people or everybody should know their music and should know the, uh, the the pieces that we're playing that particular week. You know, the challenge of orchestral life is that um, every week is a different program. If you're in school, like middle school, high school, even uh, college, the, your, your program might stay for a few weeks or a few months before you, the new thing shows up. So, you know, uh, I remember being a student and going to rehearsal. I don't, I, you know, nobody like looked at the music really, you know, so you show up and you kind of learn it. You, you, the conductor yells at you for not studying and, and it's okay. But here in the professional life, that's not going to happen. You know, it cannot happen. So you have to know the music. And as a principal, actually, I get the music uh, way ahead of time because normally we have to put bowings in there. So it's like a, uh, it trickles down to me from the concert master, second violin, viola, and then cello. I get their uh, bowings if they made any changes. Then I look at the, my part and I compare it to, to theirs and I put if, if they made big changes or if the parts are clean, you know, I have to put all the bowings in there. And then it goes to double bass and, and we're done. So um, uh, as far as that, that that's, that's, uh, that's the responsibility like that. And then, of course, you kind of have to be the, um, the other aspect is kind of being the boss of the whole section. And in the cello, being a cello principal kind of give you, gives you the uh, responsibility for your cello section, but also the, the bass section. You kind of are... Uh, I'm kind of responsible for what they're doing. They're a separate entity, but however, a lot of times we play uh, the same similar material, especially in earlier music like Beethoven, even Brahms has similar uh, cello and uh, bass parts, and of course Mozart, so we, we need to coordinate, and if there's something that's not, not right, I, you know, I usually have to step in and make some comments, usually it's very nice, I'm trying to be very cordial, and not saying, oh, come on, guys, you know, or something like that. So, so um, yeah, that's about it, I think. That's great. Thank you for sharing. And then I guess as a way to wrap up the class, if no one else has any questions, what are some um, pieces of advice that you wish that you had when you were younger? Oh, <laughs> am I so old now? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I wish that I uh, took... Um, seriously what my teachers were telling me I think uh, I spent uh, there were a couple of years in uh, in high school that I kind of drifted off from practicing and uh, I I had a lot of success as a younger kid up to maybe 14 15 and I was winning all kinds of local competitions and and doing really well and then kind of I settled on those on those uh, successes and then I kind of slipped through the cracks of the system, I think, a little bit, that I stopped practicing, but I could still play, you know? It's, it's not that I became terrible, but I feel like, uh, you know, I kind of, um, uh, as I said, I kind of slipped up, slept down a little bit because of, of, uh, of the success that I had. So if you guys are winning competitions and stuff like that, I feel like it's important to kind of uh, keep going and set more higher goals for yourself and and uh not to slow down in any way and always look up to your idols like uh, uh sometimes even now like when i have you know i have to learn something i was like oh god i don't i really don't want to do it you know what i do i i kind of i, I find a recording of somebody that i really like admire like yo-yo and harold or something 
uh, somebody like that and I listen to that and that instantly like lifts me up and gives me more energy and you know I sit down at the cello I start practicing the piece or whatever I'm working on it gives me this inspiration so maybe those are my <laughs> advices to you uh, that's great thank you for sharing that well I guess that wraps up today's class then but thank you so much uh, Mr. Swarovski for teaching and Bravo to George, Daniel, and Jordan for performing today. But yeah, thank you so oh, much, everyone. Everybody, everybody did great. Bravo. Congratulations. It was a pleasure <laughs> to, to meet you and, and listen to you play. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thank and you. Thank you, Amy, for organizing this. This yeah. is a wonderful, wonderful um, thing you're doing. <laughs> thank you. Sure. Bye. Have a great rest Bye. of your day. Thanks.